Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Chewy HiPad Plus. This is a new Android tablet to the market. We have an 11 inch 2K screen with an octa-core CPU and 4 gigs of RAM. Now the last time we took a look at a Chewy Android tablet on the channel, it wasn't great. I mean, it didn't perform well, the screen didn't come off really nicely because it was actually only running at 50 hertz instead of 60, but hopefully they've changed all that with the new HiPad Plus. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. Uh, first thing I'm seeing here is the little accessories box. I believe we're just going to get our USB Type-C cable and charger. 5 volts, 2 amps, and I really wish they would have went with a quick charging system on this tablet because after all it has a 7300 milliamp hour battery and charging it off the included brick will take around 3.5 to 4 hours to fully charge this battery. Alright, so here's the tablet itself. We do have a full unibody here. This is made of aluminum and uh, it does feel pretty premium. Definitely kind of looks like an iPad Pro here. A little thicker, but overall I gotta give it to them for the design. I mean this thing definitely feels solid. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now I've taken a look at the specs of the screen on their website and this thing should get pretty bright because they're claiming 460 nits of brightness on this 11 inch 2K 4x3 display. And that's another thing that this tablet has going for it that I personally like. I'm really glad that they added a 4x3 aspect ratio screen here, especially when it comes to emulation. So it looks like the screen brightness here is turned down. Let me go ahead and jack it up. And yeah, this actually looks really good. At first glance, this is a high quality IPS panel. Hopefully it's running at 60 hertz. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But first up, let's take a look at the design of the tablet itself. So over here on the right hand side, we have our volume rockers and it looks like we have two speaker outputs over here, but unfortunately one of these is a dud. We move around to the right hand side, kind of the same setup here, minus the volume rockers, but we do have our SD card slot. Now it might look like the HiPad Plus does have quad speakers, but unfortunately two of these are duds on each side, so we only have a stereo speaker setup. And finally, over here we have USB Type-C for charging the unit up, and our power button. So as for the specs of the HiPad Plus, for the CPU we have the MediaTek 8183. This is an octa-core ARM CPU at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G72 MP3 at 700 MHz, 4 GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 128 GB of internal storage, and I have tested up to a 256 GB micro SD card. It does work in here. I think it'll go up to 512. The display is an 11 inch IPS at 2176 by 1600. We have a 4 by 3 aspect ratio with 460 nits of brightness. 802.11 AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, a 7300 milliamp hour battery, and the unit is running Android 10 straight out of the box. And as for battery life out of the HiPad Plus, you can expect around 10 hours of video playback, 50% screen brightness, or around 5 to 6 hours of gameplay depending on what game you're playing. So as for the UI, everything's been really smooth so far. I've installed a bunch of applications, and one thing I really like about the operating system here is there's no bloat. There's actually just one extra app installed besides the Google stuff, and that's their wireless updater. That's about it. There's no extra games, there's no extra ads or anything like that. This is a pretty stock version of Android that comes pre-installed on the iPad Plus. And remember, it is Android 10. We also have full access to Google Play. There's nothing you need to jump through to get this working. You just sign into your Google account, start downloading your favorite applications. In this video, I want to take a look at some video playback from YouTube. We're also going to run a few benchmarks. We'll test some native Android games and some emulation. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Just want to mention Widevine support on this is very limited, so you're not going to get HD Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and things like that. Anything that requires a Widevine cert isn't going to work in HD, and unfortunately that's just really how it is with these Chinese Android tablets. Alright, so here's some 1440p YouTube video playback. Everything's super smooth, it's working great, so if you want to watch anything 720p, 1080, or 1440, it's going to work out just fine. But we do have the option in the YouTube app to go up to 4K. Unfortunately, this little chip just can't push 4K very well. You'll see the choppiness here when I swap over. But you'll just notice that it's a lot more choppy than 1440p. So yeah, I mean, this was never meant for 4K video playback. And when you think about it, I mean, the screen on this is only 1440p, so that's basically as high as you need to go, and it does handle that really well. But 4K is out of the question on this thing.
Moving over to some benchmarks, first up we have Geekbench 5, single core, 303, multi, 1404. I was hoping to see a little higher on that single core score, but uh, I still got some testing to do. We'll see what happens. Next up, 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. This test OpenGL on the GPU. Total score of 1241. I also ran their new Vulcan test, which is called Wildlife. It came in with a 638. And finally, Antutu, with a rather low score of 158,429. And I know that N22 is a synthetic benchmark, but I usually run this on all of my devices and it gives me a good idea of what we can and can't do on this device. This is definitely not looking like a powerhouse. Next up, we have some native Android gaming. This is Minecraft Pocket Edition, and I have my Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. It's running really good. I'm at 14 chunks. I didn't have to turn fancy graphics off or anything like that, so it'll definitely run Minecraft and the lower end stuff just fine. Taking it up a little bit to Call of Duty Mobile. Actually impressed with the performance here. This is a very well optimized game, but it's going to be fully playable on this device. If you wanted to use a controller, you could. I just figured I'd go ahead and pick up this tablet. I'm not a big fan of these bigger screens with these games here. It's a little hard to reach the buttons, but uh, overall, performance is great here. And the final native Android game I wanted to test was Genshin Impact. This is just a harder one to run. I've gone into the settings, I've set it to lowest, I've turned Bloom off, I've turned TXAA off, and I have it set to 30 FPS, and we're still experiencing some stutter. I'll go ahead and swap out characters here. We get some freeze-ups every once in a while. It's just a little too heavy-duty for this chipset. Another thing I like to test on these Android devices is cloud gaming. So first up, we have Stadia here with Cyberpunk 2077, and with that AC Wi-Fi built in, shouldn't have any trouble. Again, using that Xbox One controller here, no special controller or anything like that, it's just connected over Bluetooth, and it's a pretty good experience here with Stadia. I also tested GeForce Now, but one of my favorites right now is actually xCloud, so let's move over there. Not bad at all, still using that Xbox controller. This is xCloud, otherwise known as Xbox Game Streaming. So we're streaming Dirt 5 here from the cloud and it's working out pretty good over my Wi-Fi network. So if you do end up picking one of these up, just note that cloud gaming does work relatively well. The last things I wanted to test here were a couple of emulators. First up we have ReDream, running some Dreamcast games, it's working out pretty good. Upscaled to 1280 by 960 as you can see the FPS is up in the top left hand corner and it runs this at full speed. Really good performance with Dreamcast, so let's go ahead and move over to N64. With this one here, I'm using Moopin 64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store, and we have that perfect screen aspect ratio for these N64 games, and this chipset will handle N64 really good. So when it comes to the HiPad Plus, I think it's got an awesome screen. This thing looks absolutely amazing. 460 nits of brightness. I mean, this thing gets super bright. I was actually using it before I went to bed and I had to turn that screen brightness way, way down because it was literally lighting up the whole room. It's got good sound. I wish they would have added quad speakers here because we do have space for them, but they've only added two speakers here. 128 gigabytes of storage is sufficient. Plus we have that micro SD card. But unfortunately, this chipset just doesn't have enough power. I really wish they would have went with something a little more high-end, but after seeing the performance of Genshin Impact, and I even went through and tested PSP, the lower-end stuff's going to work fine, but even when you go up to something like Tekken 6, which I say is about a mid-range game, I could only run it at full speed at 1x. So yeah, I really do think they should have added a higher-end chipset here. And the lack of Widevine support for Netflix and other apps is a real waste of screen, because this is a really nice screen here, and it would have been awesome to play those in HD. But unfortunately, with these Chinese tablets, 
A lot of the time you just don't get that wide vine support, so you're going to be stuck with standard definition Netflix and other apps that rely on wide vine to do HD on tablets like this. So in the end, it's really hard for me to recommend this tablet in 2021. Of course, we do get really good battery life, it's got a nice screen on it, but the lack of raw CPU and GPU power, plus no wide vine support, really kind of kills it for me. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the HiPad Plus, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this tablet, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.